Hello, my name is Dino Samartzis, and I'm an associate professor here at the Department of Orthopedics and Traumatology at the University of Hong Kong in Hong Kong. And I'm here with you all today to elaborate a little bit about a study of ours that was published this month of August 2017 in the Journal of Spine, whereby we addressed or reported our findings of uh, a unique imaging uh, biomarker, which we call the UTE disc sign, and its association with spine degeneration, low back pain, and disability. Now, this study was funded by the Research Grants Council of Hong Kong, of which we are extremely uh, appreciative for their support. Now, low back pain is the, is, is the most disabling condition worldwide. It affects every population, it crosses every border. And in fact, in individuals with chronic low back pain, or these are individuals that have pain lasting three months or more, or the pain is recurring um, at a very high frequency, this pain can lead to decreased quality of life, diminished uh, uh, function, psychological distress, potentially loss of wages or salary or income, and so on and so forth. In fact, next to the common cold, low back pain is one of the most common conditions in motivating individuals to seek medical consultation. In the United States alone, to give you an example, the indirect and direct treatment for low back pain is over 100 billion US dollars per year. So suffice it to say, low back pain is a tremendous social economic burden to society in Hong Kong or abroad. So without a doubt, low back pain is a very, very important condition and one that demands tremendous amount of attention. It is very important to have a better understanding in terms of what's causing low back pain, where is the pain coming from, in order that we can actually devise more appropriate preventative measures for low back pain, uh, optimize the management or the treatment options for patients having low back pain, and in so doing, also improve the, uh, the outcomes uh, from these management options in, in patients presenting with low back pain. So there are many different factors that can contribute to the development of low back pain. However, one of these may be attributed to degeneration of the intervertebral disc. Our spinal column is composed of these bony vertebral bodies, and in between these vertebral bodies, we have these cushion-like structures called the intervertebral discs. And these discs act as a shock absorber or a cushion to accommodate the stress and the strain that's placed upon the spinal column in our body. And these discs are tremendously important because once they start to degenerate, and lead into um, a cascade of events that can change their biochemical uh, constitution and their morphology, this can lead actually to uh, low back pain. Therefore, uh, this degeneration is a, an extremely important phenomenon or observation that has captured the attention of clinicians and researchers alike for many, many, many years. Now, to properly visualize what's going on in the disc, to see if the disc is normal or if it's degenerated um, in time. We, we, use, we have been using, for the past three decades now, MRI. Now, MRI is a fantastic imaging technology that provides a fantastic snapshot in terms of the soft tissue integrity or changes of the human body. And conventionally, we've been using T2-weighted MRI, which is a, a unique sequence in the MRI that provides a certain resolution to assess the integrity of the intervertebral discs. However, there has been a problem when we've been doing so. We've seen in the past, and studies have also reported, that we see that there are individuals that may have low back pain, but when you look at their conventional T2-weighted MRI, the MRI doesn't really seem to indicate any marked degenerative changes of the disc. Alternatively, we also see individuals that happen to have some degenerative disc findings on MRI and conventional MRI, but they don't seem to have low back pain. Obviously, there is a mismatch here. There's not a, an appropriate agreement in terms of what we see on the imaging and what we see in the terms of the pain profile. So because of this, um, certain individuals throughout the past decade or so have been trying to develop more novel MRI to look at early disc changes or try to identify uh, if indeed a disc is, is the culprit or the origin of low back pain. Now what we did for our study is that we utilized 
uh, ultra short time to echo MRI or UTE MRI um, to look into the discs a little bit more thoroughly um, in, an, in, an, in a manner that no one's ever looked at before. And we've been able to identify, utilizing this UTE MRI, a novel imaging biomarker that's located within the disc, and we've been able to identify this in a very easy, reliable manner, quick manner, and we've seen something very fascinating. Um, this UTE disc sign, um, for the most part, cannot be picked up on the conventional MRI. And secondly, we've, we've noticed that individuals that happen to have this UTE disc sign happen to have um, more uh, low back pain or severity of low back, pain, low back pain and disability in compared to those when we just look at the conventional MRI. So why is this very important? Because utilizing this different MRI sequence, we've been able to identify hidden degenerative changes that are going on in the intervertebral disc. And secondly, we've been able to um, identify that this sign potentially could be the missing link between what we see on MRI or imaging and individuals presenting with low back pain. Now, with that said, our findings are also important because they help us to broaden our understanding of degenerative disc disease of the spine and what additional important changes may be going on within the disc that we otherwise were not, not aware of. Our findings are also important because such imaging can potentially help to pinpoint the origin of low back pain if indeed it is coming from the disc. And we believe that utilizing this UTE MRI with the conventional uh, MRI together, this can potentially provide a more personalized, more optimized, more a, or a novel approach towards the treatment of disc degeneration to provide the best possible outcomes for patients. Now, what does this UTE disc sign represent? We've done additional studies, and we think at this point we have a, a relatively good handle what this actually means, uh, which we are actually happy to share with you in the future. But what is also important to understand is that our study that's, that was reported this month uh, in the journal is the first of its kind, meaning, though, that we need additional prospective longitudinal multi-center uh, studies to further validate our findings and assess uh, the clinical utility of the UTE disc sign in practice. Thank you very much.